with side points of view affirmed by quotations that help to make this case that I think helps us all to understand what mass incarceration is doing to our system. In 1971, it was President Nixon who, according to his White House Chief of Staff, said that, and this is a quote in the diary of Haderman, you have to face the fact that the whole problem is really the blacks. The key is to devise a system that recognizes this while not appearing to it. This was in the backdrop of the 1968, quote, race riots. In 1973, S. Scott Green, who was a former director of the World Bank, suggested that we were moving in a world in which new policies would have to address, quote, the gulf between the rich northern whites and the colored southern poor. S. Scott Green at that time was over at the University of Chicago, and he was one of the uh, fellows at the Atlas Stevenson Institute for International Affairs, where I was privileged to also be a fellow, and I was in his class in which he was already predicting the coming down of the wall between the communists and the capitalists and saying that the new world order would be divided between rich white northern nations and poor colored southern nations. Number three, at the same time, B.F. Skinner, who was the behavioralist, predicted that, quote, the obsolescence of democracy and the overriding imperative need to move to a genetic meritocracy, end quote, was where this country was going, and so he penned his last, most profound book called Beyond Freedom and Dignity, and he was predicting that democracy would be obsolete and we would move to a situation where it would not be one man, one vote. So when we think about voter suppression that's going on right now, the point I'm trying to make is that these were things we talked about 40 years ago. Number four, Ben Wattenberg, global demographer, advisor to five presidents, raised the question in 1987, direct quote, the book that you need to try and find is called The Birth Dirt, D-E-A-R-T-H. What happens when people in free countries don't have enough babies? It's the name and title of his book. And the quote from that book says, an answer to that question, will our values continue to dominate in a world where our population shrinks? Shrinks to 9%, 5%, shrinks even lower. Our economic and military power go down. This view should not just be seen as Western chauvinism. So what Ben Wattenberg was suggesting is that the demographic shift in the way in which the world was being organized, both in terms of number and qualitatively, would have to be addressed if Western power was going to maintain its dominance in the world. And lastly, I represent an organization that is very much grounded in the call of prophetic witness and the call for standing on righteousness in relationship to justice in the world out of a Christian perspective. But I am not naive, nor is our organization, to understand that there are theological differences and there are differences in points of view. That diversity exists even within the black church. But at the same time that these points of views were being expressed, by the conservative right in these other disciplines that I've just talked about, the same was being expressed in terms of theology. And so Bishop Earl Paul, who represented this movement that is called Kingdom Theology, or Dominion Theology, said this, that what we need in the Western world is, quote, we're doing, what we're doing is setting up a network by which we can spread propaganda so that the systems of the world will collapse because of their inability to survive. And what will be left will be a system the church has built, a Christian culture that will have dominion over the world." End quote. Bishop, you understand what that means. So that's a new iteration of missionary work and evangelization that is built on an assumption that somehow the white 
Western view of Christian culture and theology has to dominate in the world. Now, I say all that to say that those points of view then, I think, become legitimately a concern that we ought to have in terms of how the world is shaped and now what's happening in our community when we look out and we understand that one in three black people in a demographic cohort is somewhere under the system that is considered to be a system of mass incarceration. I also say that though we are organizing this meeting, for example, under the notion of a national black agenda, one of the questions has to be, so what does it mean to be black? Is there such a thing as a black agenda? Is there such a thing as a black church? I mean, the reality is, unless we define what the we and who the we is, we're not clear about what we're doing. And what we really know is that in some ways, very significantly, race, quote, as a concept is no longer politically correct to even talk about. And so, as Michelle Alexander's book is entitled, she entitled it, Mass Incarceration in the Age of What? Color Blindness. As though